Why did I start doing words? Well, I've never considered myself a word person, never considered myself, uh, you know, well read, unfortunately. And, and I thought if I forced myself to think about words more, and I love words, and particularly I like play words, word play, um, if, if I forced myself, I would have to get better, and I would have to learn new words, and I would have to learn new quotes. And so I started out and I found this sketchbook that has me casting about. And then these are the very first word ideas. So this is um, a line, a quote, I guess. Genius does what it must and talent does what it can, written over and over. This is just calligraphic, uh, calligraphic alphabet. Uh, these are other ideas, and then it occurred to me, I mean, I, I looked through all my favorite books, uh, tried to think of favorite quotes, tried to, just tried to think of lines from songs, doing where do you start? And I've always collected fortune cookie settings, and you, those of you that have gone out for dinner with us know that I, that I always ask for the fortune cookie, so I have at least 30 or 40 years of fortune cookie fortunes. So, I thought, this is something that's meaningful to me. I can't explain why, but there's a truth to enough of these that I keep doing this. So I went through all of them. I mean, I have piles. I went through all of them, and I wrote them down, or I wrote down the ones that were the best. And then I spent days reading them again, and I put marks next to the ones that I really liked. <laughs> and then I chose one that I really liked a lot. Doing what you like is freedom. Liking what you do is happiness. And that, so that was the first one I tried to do. And I did it just the way I wrote it. I wrote it in letters about this big, and I cut them out, and I did the whole thing as one thing, so the stencil was about this big. It looked like crap. I mean, this just made the worst thing. It just wasn't interesting to look at. So I learned right away that the words had to be bigger, and the words couldn't be straight across. The words had to go like this. So, around that time, the hospital in Lancaster asked me to do, to participate in a program where they were, uh, they intended to have things that were available for patients' rooms. And so, what would I do? What words could I do that would make sense for patients' rooms? And, wow, well, here it is. Health, healthy, heal, restore, cure, return to health. So here's my first idea of what this might be. And strength and hope were two words that I really liked. Faith was another one. Um, joy was another one, I think. I asked them if they would like me to consider strength, hope, and faith. And I did pieces that were that. And this is strength. And I brought this along so that you could See an early one that actually has letters that are recognizable. Can I put this on here? Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So anytime there's something like that, that's a T or an F. And there obviously is an S. So S, T, that's the R, that's the E. So it's all there. Okay? Maggie? So. Uh, I think so. Okay. So, <laughs> the idea. so what is string? What are strong colors? What is inspirational? If you're if you're lying on your back and you want to heal, what is strength? What do you what would you like? So for me, strength are these sort of colors at that time uh, handled this way. It, it seemed appropriate that I should include more hand in the work, more of my own hand. And I set about in this sketchbook. So here you can see, here's a sketch for a painting, and this is actually the word excellence repeated like Olympic rings. And there's one of those on a gallery in Connecticut right now. There's another one. And so this is just essentially automatic writing. So automatic writing for me is not thinking at all and just making marks until something, uh, in this case, is compelling. And I. I hit on this, and I like these. I'm not going to take the, the tissue off of each one, but I find one that I like, I'll take it off. So these marks, for me, are interesting and compelling enough to pursue, 
whether or not they're totally original, I, I, I'll leave that to someone else. For me, they're original. I've never done marks like this before. And you can see I, I experimented with lots of them before I got to the point where bingo, I'm really liking it now. When I really like uh, studies, I do them in blue. This is my favorite color. So I did, I did this book, finished this book, and then I started to do small studies, not unlike these, but earlier versions. And then I did a couple of full sheets, and in arches a full sheet is 22 by 30. And by that time I'd been working on these, I, I took a couple of months to work on this, and by that time I thought, well, I spent a lot of time on this, I guess I should get serious about it, I'm not just playing, you know, I really have, something has to come out of this, or something has to be, you know, whatever. And, and I couldn't think of a word that really wanted to be associated with this group of work. Um, I asked a couple of friends that are, that lean more that way, and nobody else had a word that they really liked, and I just felt like I was playing. So I, I took the word playing, and I did it around the edge of two of these pieces of paper that were very much like these blue ones. So essentially they were blue and off-white. <clears throat> and I did the words in blues and off-whites and white so that they really blended with the rest of the marks on the page. And I called them playing around because the word was playing and it was going around the outside. And that's essentially what I've been doing since. Uh, these are the same thing. These are layers and layers of strokes. And then <clears throat> the difference, and you, this one you can see that one is very difficult to see, but there becomes a, the word goes around the outside of this, you might say diamond shape, and creates kind of a ghost image. So that these, all these paintings are called playing around. Instead of doing a couple of studies, I thought, well, maybe I'll do a show of studies. Maybe I'll really, because I've always wanted to do a large group, a large wall like this. <clears throat> and uh, I just wanted to see how, how far I could take it. So I, I've literally been doing these little little guys for eight months now. And I'm, I couldn't be more delighted with uh, the variations and the, the level of inquiry that I've been able to uh, achieve. This one is, is pretty early. You can see the difference from, between this one and, and other ones. The one in the corner in the black frame is the earliest one. And you can see that they go in, in stages where sometimes there's lines underneath and then there's just quick work on top. Sometimes there's layers and layers and then a grid and then quick work on top. But all this started as a way to get to the next group of real paintings. But in the meantime, I just love them doing these and I hate this, I really hate this stuff. So that's, that's the basic idea and that's the level of inquiry that I've tried to pursue and hopefully towards some kind of sublime that you as a viewer might be able to uh, experience. And I want to end with and there's a great show in Washington, D.C. right now that I highly recommend. Robert Irwin is famous for having saying, the wonder is still there. And as an artist, you go into your studio, and, and I've been doing this for a long time, don't have anybody else in the room with me, don't have anybody telling me what to do except maybe the bank, occasionally <laughs> Shelley. So I set up my own problems. I pretty much try to do whatever I want to do. I try not to think about money. Joseph Campbell always says, used to say, it was a lot, you have to rid yourself of every worry, of every concern when you go, go to work. You have to just concentrate, just focus, just be present on the work or the work will be nothing. And so the, the joy that I feel in this work, the tremendous amount of variation within a very simple uh, group of marks uh, I'm, I'm very intrigued by it, and I probably will continue. All of us that, have, that work at, at any job know that it's important to reinvent in a way that is meaningful. The best work is both personal and universal. So if, if you are doing things, and if any of you are doing things that have great personal significance, but make it in whatever way that it can be universally read, and then 
for the longest period of time. Now, this is assuming that the craftsmanship and the presentation and everything are as good as they can be. That's what creates a good work of art. And then the longest, the work that, that is considered good for the longest period of time, you know, taking the Mona Lisa, that sort of thing, that's, that's what makes a great work because it, it reads for the longest period of time to the largest group of people. I make text and number based color oriented abstraction. And the reason I, I started talking about inquiry and showed these old sketchbooks was, is I'm interested in the inquiry of how do I create different grounds for the next group. So instead of them being maybe overall brush strokes like this, which may, may have come from this sort of thing, what else might they be? So these are, you could say, ideas towards the grounds of paintings in the future. At least that's the way it started. Now, for me, they're just great little paintings. Some of them are just great little paintings. This is killer little painting. But it'd be nice if that was a ground too. You know, this is a great little painting. Um. You work on a few of them at the same time. Is that why they seem to really work so well together? Yeah, I'll I'll start. I'll rip up a whole pile, and I'll start as many as I can, and then they take a while to dry. You know, I may work on them and then break for lunch, and maybe they'll some will be dry when I come back, and and I'll work on some of those. Maybe I'll start some other one. Maybe something seems to be going right, and I'll use that. And it's just like, it's totally free association, sort of like what you're doing. It's totally like, that's pretty good. And I try not to think about it. And then at some point I try to think about it. But I try not to, really try not to think about it too much. You start to think about it, you muck it up. Yeah. I'll think about it later. Yeah. They, they become something else. But you can tell the ones that are just rocking. Are you a Virgo? Because I love the symmetry. I love it. Um, I love it. Well, first of all, I'm happily married. <laughs> I'm a Turonian. My ancestors come from Toronia. <laughs>